Hello and welcome to my Model Corner Project 20 Viewer's Choice 7. Our third place winner was a selection from my small model stash, the Mitsubishi F2 Fighter Jet. Let's find out what we can shape out of this box of parts. I am a sculptor. Oh yeah? Prove it. Make something out of this. There. Hand. <laughs> We'll begin by cutting off the pieces for the cockpits and the ejection seats and then file off the excess sprue in preparation for painting. So I'll answer some questions during this video I get in the comments section about what or why I'm doing certain things in this build video. For the black shading there are a few purposes. We are laying down a foundation for our main color to adhere. Additionally, we are simply not painting one coat over another. Using the airbrush, we can modulate the look by allowing a little of the black to show through here and there. This can create the effect of depth through false shadows. The shading can also add to the illusion of faded paint and also general grime. Finally, seam lines that may thought to have been eliminated can be revealed once the primer coat is laid thereby remedied. I'm also asked why I don't dry brush items such as cockpit panels and ejection seat details. That method is very effective and it does come down to more of a matter of choice. I feel I have a little more control by scraping away at the black paint to reveal those buttons, switches, panel edges, and contours.
At this point, I'd like to thank my regular viewers for tuning in once again and supporting this journey that is the Max Afterburner channel. It's grown much more than I ever thought it would. I used to tell coworkers a few years ago how amazed I was that I had 25 subscribers back then. I'm delighted that there are people getting some enjoyment out of these efforts, and that is the main goal in making these videos. To get a nice comment, a subscription, and maybe a thumbs up is rewarding. We affixed our forward control panels and ejection seats. Even though they were added evenly as expected to the cockpit tub, there is a bit of a problem once the fuselage upper and lower halves are being joined. The seats must be tilted slightly forward while the upfront controls need to be tilted aft in order to fit properly under their respective glare shield. In past videos I was using the Iwata Neo which I liked very much. It took a lot of abuse and I finally retired it during Project 16 and went to the more expensive Iwata Eclipse which unfortunately needs to be babied. I have to break it down and clean it after every paint session. A regular rinse between days does not work, it will jam.
We're now ready to cut out our camouflage templates. This is just one such technique to mask off patterns on a model. Some employ putty, paraffin film, or some modelers are steady enough to airbrush in the colors by freehand. Okay, our first color seems satisfactory. Let's mask off the main body of the jet for camouflage number one. I'm often asked which air compressor I use and at what PSI. I use my old Pash D500 compressor, which I bought in 1997. It's very clunky and loud, but it works. It does not have a gauge, but it runs at roughly 20 to 22 PSI, I believe. Sometimes I'm asked if I sell my models. Not at this time, but that may change if I continue with the channel. For an early look at our pattern, we remove our paper cutouts. Next, we add our mask in preparation for adding camouflage number two. This color was a tad tricky for me to come up with. I started out trying to tone down darker blues, but it worked out much better to take a lighter blue and darken that up. Depending on how much variation you desire for your overall exterior look, we can add a wet spaghetti noodle pattern randomly on the surfaces. This allows us the opportunity to create tonal contrast depending on how much or little we filter this marbling as we add our main blue coats. For our next painting task, we mask off the air refuel door, navigation slime lights, nose radome, the lower TACAN, ILS, CARA antennas, and the chaff flare dispenser covers. Decals are included for some of these, but taking the time to paint these out generally creates a better appearance. Next we have some trim details with a white gray warning field by the trailing edges of the flat bronze, a white gray strip on the edge of the rudder, and gray segments on the horizontal stabilizers. We carefully fill in the ADF type antenna fins on the nose with a very fine brush.
Let's remove the cotton overspray protection and get ready to do any required touch-ups in these areas. The F2 fighter utilizes a drug chute for added braking capability. Painting the lower half yellow and after allowing it to dry, the retention straps can be highlighted and revealed by scraping the paint away. Prior to weathering and decals that will turn the look of this fighter around, we'll add a clear coat to protect the main paintwork. I add wash to emphasize rivet and panel line detail as well as add a little bit of the grime aircraft buildup under normal operations. Most modelers apply their decals prior to this step, but I prefer to have the option to rework this weathering without potentially damaging the decals if there is an unforeseen problem. If all goes well, then weathering is added over the decal as necessary afterwards. I also work one portion at a time to concentrate on each particular area usually with a cotton swab. On broader areas, some prefer to use a paper towel or a rag to speed up the process. For the darker areas of the jet, I use close to a purely white oil paint wash to detail the areas where a dark wash would be indistinguishable. The decal application is the same process repeated many times for this model. Demonstrating the steps on the vertical tail, we add our decal solution and then place and position our emblem. After setting the decal firmly with a cotton swab to remove air and liquid, we can add another coat of solution. After the labels have set for a while using a very sharp knife so that the decal is not torn, we can cut along panels to delineate the lines more clearly. Adding the rising sun or the red meatball makes for a nice spectrum of colors with the blue shades. And one more look at decal application with a walkway borderline on the left wing. Now that the decals are complete, let's open up our doors and add our main and nose landing gears.
The door actuator arms are nice and beefy and are set up to mate up firmly to the doors. And now for the wing pylons and rails, and then the AM-3 missiles. After rolling at 180, it's time to add the stabilizers. Attaching the tail, I discovered that this model is aft heavy and attaching the canopy glass barely balances the model. Including some counterweight to the nose before mating the fuselage halves is recommended. Needed to go back and add some rails. Then onto the upper antenna. Then the wing mounted rail stations and missiles. Most of the time my goose like knocking over a bottle of plastic glue or spilling paint occur when I'm not recording, but a couple of airbrush faux pas clips got recorded this time which will be presented at the end of this video. Coming up at the end here and we'll be ready to display our Viper Zero. Stay tuned afterwards for the much anticipated wild card drawing for Project 21. Take care and we'll see you later. For our drawing, we'll be picking from this list. These are the models that were on the previous ballot and received at least one vote. Also included are viewers write-in candidates. I've printed this list out and cut each selection into individual strips of paper. In they go into our glass knick-knack bowl. Keep your fingers crossed for your top choice. Randomly pulling one out, we have...